unstoppable. We are unstoppable. Another world is possible. 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 But there was a day where my whole world came crashing down around me. Uh, and it was the first day I went to middle school. And uh, I don't know if middle schools in Canada are similar to public middle schools in the US, but they're often a very traumatic experience for young kids. And for me, as a young boy whose favorite color was pink and was very effeminate, uh, I walked in, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, the first day, a boy, an older boy, an eighth grader named Jeremy Cole came up to me and grabbed me by the collar and hoisted me in the air and slammed me down on a table. And he said, faggot, you don't belong here. And I was like, whoa, you are totally right. I don't belong here at all. <laughs> and it, it set this trajectory of being profoundly alienated and, and gay bashed, right? And it wasn't until later that year that I found my way to a dingy punk rock club in Norwalk, Connecticut. Uh, and amidst the loud music, there were people with open arms. And they said, come on in. It's not you that's broken and screwed up. It's society. And the fact that you don't fit in shows how sane you are, right? <laughs> and that, in fact, what they said was that the, the uh, only honorable place for a thoughtful person to be in this society is on the margins, and that we're going to stand up and fight. And that very much shaped my worldview from a young age. And um, so I went through middle school, and by the time I got through it and got to the end of it, um, was, was organizing in the punk rock scene, and neo-Nazis in the late 90s had started to organize in Connecticut publicly. And Wallingford, Connecticut, was known as the Ku Klux Klan capital of the North. Uh, we told each other that they forced the kids to go to school on Martin Luther King Day, uh, which I don't know if that was true, but it showed sort of the, the overt systemic racism, right? And uh, the Nazis would attack the punks. <laughs> and and uh, some of my friends were, were victims of violence. And we were like, we need to stand up. We're going to do something about this. And uh, in ninth grade, I joined a group called Anti-Racist Action. And, <laughs> and at least where we were, Anti-Racist Action believed that we could defeat racism uh, by physically fist-fighting Nazis one by one. <laughs> and so that's what we did <laughs> um, at shows or at their demonstrations. And we, you know, we were like 14 years old, so we weren't like fighting adult Nazis, right? We were <laughs> kids our own age in their, in their youth movement. Uh, and very quickly, to our surprise, this did not, in fact, decrease the amount of violence that was being perpetrated in our community. Uh, and we realized this was not a winning strategy. And uh, one day we went to go have a peaceful demonstration um, at the leading white supremacist in the country. His name was Matthew Hale. He, he uh, was the leader of a group called the World Church of the Creator, uh, which isn't a creepy, culty sounding name at all. He was speaking at a public library in Wallingford, Connecticut. And we went to go protest, and we were met with this line of riot police. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I've exaggerated it in my memory, but I sort of remember it as this like phalanx of riot police. And any time that uh, a neo-Nazi skinhead came to approach, the line would open up and would let them into the library. And any time someone looked like a dirty punk kid, which we all very much looked like, uh, they were, we, we were kept out, right? And I was enraged, you know, these, these fascists, right? And, but it made sense to me because my worldview was that all authority was the same, right? The, the cops were the same as the Nazis, were the same as the Republicans, and the Democrats were the same as mom and dad, right? <laughs> and... Um, when, when I was being shoved to the side by these skinheads, um, getting into this thing, uh, it, I, I actually had this sort of snap and remembered uh, a few weeks ago when I, w I actually went to the synagogue that I go to and was getting advice from my Sunday school teacher. And she was like, you know, uh, the work that y'all are doing, it's great that y'all are taking risks, but you're taking the wrong risks. What you're doing is ridiculous. <laughs> and she started to tell me about this Jewish concept called tzedek, or social justice, and she told me about the Freedom Riders, um, which were, were groups of folks who, who were uh, working in solidarity with um, black folks organizing in the U.S. South during the civil rights movement. And she talked about how the, the white people who were allies, many of them were Jewish, practicing this idea of tzedek, and they would go and they would put their bodies on the line 
often against the wishes or against the good counsel of um, their, the elders in the movements. They were like, what you're doing is too radical, it's too extreme. Um, but because they did it nonviolently and with a level of dignity, um, it actually ended up becoming uh, part of the backbone of that movement for desegregation. And they ended up getting beaten up, they got dragged to jail, they, uh, some of them were killed, they witnessed lynchings, white mob violence, police violence, right? Um, and so I thought of that moment, and it sort of shattered my frustration that I had uh, with the police uh, when, when we were at that protest in Wallingford. And that was what allowed me to actually open my eyes and notice that about half of those cops were, were black. And I was like, oh, you don't want to be here, do you? <laughs> those cops were being forced to be there. They were being forced to protect people who wanted to kill them. And I actually had a lot more in common with those officers than I did with other people <laughs> in Wallingford, Connecticut, in that area, right? It made me realize that, yeah, in this instance, the police were standing in the way of justice, but not because individual officers were good or bad, but because of the system. It helped me understand the difference between individuals and systems, and that the system of policing is designed to support the status quo, and in this town, it was a very extreme status quo. Make sense? So, um, yeah, does that make sense? I'm getting some nods. <laughs> um, and that, that sort of set me on this trajectory of, of a commitment to nonviolent mass organizing and constantly asking questions of who are the right targets, what are the right strategies. Uh, and I worked on a bunch of different activist projects. And by the time I got to college, uh, George Bush started to drop bombs on Iraq. And so we organized a big student strike. We shut down our campus. We marched into Boston. We were joined by tens of thousands of other students from other places all, all around the area. And it was so cathartic for me to be surrounded by this sea of people who wanted to stop the war. It was the first, it was the biggest thing I had ever had a role in organizing. And it felt like the whole world was sort of in, in, in revolt. It was very exciting to me at the time. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, a snarky friend came up to me and she was like, so how did this help stop the war? <laughs> and I was like, uh, what do you mean? We got together, we had all our friends and there were so many people and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and she was like, no, 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 I mean, how did y'all canceling classes for an afternoon put pressure on the Bush administration or on the Pentagon to stop the war? And I was like, uh, I don't have an answer for you. And had this sinking pit in my stomach that was like, what did we really accomplish, right? And uh, in my head, I had had it like we were taking risks. We were breaking the rules. We were doing everything the right way uh, without really realizing that going, uh, you know, going into the city for an afternoon and then going back to business as usual is not that big of a risk. I think the folks who stood up earlier as part of the Quebec student movement know that, that you might not have won those gains if you had done your strike for just an afternoon, right? <laughs> it, took, it took six months, right? There's... And so... This got me thinking a lot about the difference between actions that are purely for our own self-expression versus playing to win. And I was like, I want to play to win, and never again do I want to leave an action not knowing how to evaluate whether we are effective or not. Maybe the actions are or not effective, but I want a way to answer that question at least. Uh, so I started working on a bunch of different projects, and by the time we got to 2006, in 2006, the concept of greenwashing, are you all familiar with this idea, greenwashing? Yeah? So greenwashing was not in the public awareness, really, and some of the, the worst polluting companies were starting to just begin to give their image makeovers of pretending that they were green, right? And I was working on a campaign uh, for more fuel-efficient vehicles. And we found out that the CEO of General Motors was going to be speaking at the Los Angeles Auto Show. And he was going to be speaking to uh, a room full of uh, reporters only, about a thousand reporters. And it was going to be all about how environmentally friendly General Motors was. And it was all going to be a lie. So what we could have done, what I would have done in the past, is gone with our signs saying, we're right and you're wrong, and here's our 10 facts, and it's all cited and footnoted, and blah, 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 blah right? Um, we didn't do that. <laughs> Instead, um, we made fake press passes and snuck into the events. And <laughs> we sat in the first two rows, and we had one of us who, was, who very much looked the part. He was tall and balding and white and a man, and we, he... Uh, pretended to, he was going to be the MC for the day. And so one thing I've learned uh, in my work is that you can often do the like Jedi mind trick of like, these are not the activists you are looking for.